this. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Wow. This is fantastic. Hi, alligator eyes. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, you got alligator eyes too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've unlocked my rotation badge. <laughs> We're ready to go to the next How many one. badges are there? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> are we out of cups? <laughs> We have a few more trips in Florida before we take off for this year's big destination. We'll chat about that soon, but some of you may already be able to guess what it is. But, oh no! Oh my, are you joking me? <laughs> what is our deal? <laughs> Winter is the best time to be in Florida. And if you're looking for even more travel ideas, check out season 9.5, when we traveled across the country and down through St. Augustine to Key West. Before making our way back up, to the west side of the coast, through St. Pete and the Panhandle. This is ranking up in the top things we've ever done. Yes! I, I have nothing more to say than I, that. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. In fact, the best way to watch any KYD season is through our playlist, which plays each episode in order per season, all the way back from episode one. But for now, join us along the space coast of Florida as we stay at Sebastian Inlet State Park not too far from another favorite campground in Melbourne, Long Point Park. The water feels great. Does it? Oh yeah. But this episode isn't just about beautiful sites and state parks. We'd like to share some RV tips along the way too. One of the reasons why I like taking a break from RVing for a bit is because when we come back to RVing, there's so many things that feel kind of like new, things I want to share because I haven't been doing it for a while. Whereas when we do this, when we go on a trip for four or five months at a time, sometimes it's just, sometimes it's all just kind of like normal stuff and I forget to start, I forget to talk about it. One of the things that I mentioned on a live stream we did, when I bring up the, the tongue jack, I've learned for our rig and how our chains are connected to the frame, I've learned that if the chains sit right above my yellow blocks, it means that my tongue jack is at the perfect height where I can bring my my hitch ball and it just pops right under it. it took me a long time to figure out that was there a lot of people when i mentioned that on the live stream said that level mate pro actually has a recall which is fine that's cool but that means i gotta get out my phone and look at it whereas i can just raise it i can look i love i love visual indicators um over technology if i can but i love the level mate pro just not for that so anyhow i'm gonna do that and we're gonna hook up while Char charlie's away As long as we're talking about hooking up and stuff like that, I was hooking up our chains last year uh, out in Tampa, and I was talking about the chains, and a subscriber said, hey Mark, you should just put a zip tie on one of those chains so you can see exactly where you need to hook it every time. I thought that was a genius idea. I was gonna paint or put like colored electrical tape, but um, a zip tie is so much better. So they actually, uh, I did it right after he mentioned that, and it was about a year before the zip ties finally broke. So then just recently I bought orange zip ties because I had black ones on, orange would be even better. So now I'm gonna reapply an orange zip tie to the chain that I used. That way I can just visually look down and put it in. That was another little good tip from the community. I didn't tell you, um, the water leak in the fresh water turned out to be the little spigot. There's a little plastic tube that comes out. It probably got really cold and the, all the ice was coming up and it, and it made it brittle and then it popped it off. And so I went down there and I just put a little silicone inside, plugged it up, we now have a fresh water tank. Um, we're headed out to Alabama next week to go meet with Ronnie with Airstream Nuts and Bolts and he's already got a replacement part. So we're gonna go replace that. Hose clamp it mm -hmm. and then use the existing holes to screw this into the side. All right, here, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding the camera, I would, but someone's gotta record this. <laughs> Camper registration. Camper registration.
registration. There we go. And you're gonna go this way. And you're gonna follow it around till you come to 38, which is right here to be located. Site 30, site 38. Awesome. Parking spots like this. And then we gotta go around the loop. That's a blind back end right there, folks. How we looking? We are we straight? Some people wonder why I don't use the Anderson blocks, and I've mentioned this before, but you might not have seen the episode. It was Capital Reef when I mentioned it, but that is that if I have to come up 1.25 or less, I just prefer to put the blocks down and then get uh, just a regular leveling blocks. See, it says 0.75, so I can just put it in drive and you see that? See all the greens? Must see green, green. It's just easier because if you have to come up on the Anderson blocks 1.25 inches or less, it actually I would just use one tire. But the process of dealing with the Anderson blocks when I leave unless if I were to do it on the back tire, adds just a little bit more complication. It's just so easy to put those blocks down, roll up, put the parking brake on, be done. So anything less than 1.25, I just do that. The other thing I'll tell you about leveling is I absolutely always, 100%, regardless of how flat, is, flat a site is, even on concrete, I chalk my tires. It's just part of the process. Sometimes, a little while ago, I would look around and I'd be like, oh, this is level. You can't look at the ground, even on concrete, you can't look at the ground and determine if something's level over 55 feet. I mean, you can, but you can't, you know what I mean? And so there have been times where I thought, oh, we're level, I'm not gonna chalk. And then you come off of that ball, the trailer comes forward two inches, two inches is just enough for the tongue jack to slide right off of the blocks. You can bust your frame, hurt yourself, damage your truck, it's just not worth it. So now, when it comes to chalking, especially on a side that I'm up, even though I'm up only an inch, especially on this side, I'm gonna do all four. But I just do it, it's just something I do every time. And because I'm not a huge checklist person, although I like a checklist, it's just I don't always have them, we've been doing this for a while, um, I do it process. Process over checklist. In absence of a checklist, process. And, and my process is to do the same thing every single time, no matter what. And because it's impossible to think that that you could do something without being interrupted, um, I tend to do it to a point where I think this is an acceptable point to stop. What's interesting about that is we were at a NASA briefing, and that's one of the exact things that astronaut Bob, he's an astronaut and he was the former director of the center, NASA. It's exactly the same thing he said. The really important stuff you memorize, you're going through a checklist and something interrupts you, and it's really critical that you make sure that you go in at the same point that you left off and you don't leave something out or it can have really severe consequences down the road. Because that's the same conclusion I came up with and I didn't go to astronaut school. <laughs> Hi, I just met Artie, he's the camp host. He came over to introduce himself. He's so nice. No Artie, no party. <laughs> Good to meet you. No Artie, no party. No, no Artie. <laughs> Wednesday morning, 7.30, out by the ranger registration office. There, a ranger is gonna take us on a birding hike, walk. Stop. Look how excited she gets. Isn't that cool? But that was really cool. It was you cool. You saw the little pieces that I fell did, off? yeah. Yeah. I wish we would have saw right from the beginning. Yeah. Right from over there, Look blasting it. up. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Isn't that You're awesome? Going up. When you 
stay at Sebastian. Yeah. You get to just go right over that bridge and then follow the road and you get a free access pass to the beach here. It's really cool. They have a little grill up there. I mean, nothing special with the grill, but just like at least you have access to food. And then you can either choose to stay over here on the beach side or there's a little inlet over there. If you have little kids, it's really shallow and super cute, easy to swim. So it's kind of cool. Very cool. We had to bring Charlie back though. Yes. Yeah. No dogs. Trying to get these little dragonflies. There's like 50 of them right there. The problem is there's about 500,000 noceums. These are things that you can't see that make your beach experience miserable. And unfortunately, they're just outnumbering the dragonflies. Because I think the dragonflies' job is to eat them. eat them, but they're just not keeping up. So we're gonna go. A little wind? A little wind, and then all the bugs are got a problem. So the time has come. Yes. You get to go look at all the birds in a sanctuary or a tour. I Listen, don't know. I just show up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm I heard Mark Attenberg's going to be there though. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Let's go see him. Let's go see him. No, you won't actually see him. You just hear him. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. This is this is going to be amazing. <laughs> I mean, the birds we're going to see today. <laughs> It's going to be the biggest year ever. I mean, it'll just be the, the biggest year ever. Uh, I hear the birdies. Well, they're still they're still out there. <laughs> Even though we can't see them. It's just going to be it's just going to be an audio tour of the birds. <laughs> like, do you hear that? That that is the rare Sebastian woodpecker. Also, if you there? cheat sheets on your phone, there's some apps, especially one called Merlin Bird ID. It's great for singing birds because you can hit like an audio recording and it'll identify the bird for you. So they gave us a really great helpful app where you can look up birds. It's like, it's called Merlin Bird ID, really neat. Mine automatically populated to bird hunting. Different so program altogether. Different program. And <laughs> not allowed not, in the state park. Not allowed. <laughs> are 196 species of breeding birds in the state of Florida, making it quite the place for bird watching, or birding, as they say. The identifying marks could be a band right behind the eye where this one doesn't have one. If you haven't done it, you might think this hobby is silly, but in reality, it's quite addictive. Birders share a checklist worldwide, helping each other know exactly where to find exact species that they're looking for. Now let's listen in for the elusive catbird. So hopping around on the ground right here, he's kind of ducking out of the way, is what's called a catbird. Ah, it looks like we've spotted a Sebastian woodpecker. Yes, I've made that name up for video dramatic purposes, but let's listen in, shall we? It's doubtful that this fish thought it would end up on the top of a telephone pole. Our tour lasted 90 minutes, winding through the park, spotting various species, including even turtles. A little mocker, yeah. That's a state bird? Yeah. And by the looks of these lenses, capturing still images of these birds is clearly Another popular hobby in Sebastian Inlet State Park. Before we knew it, it was time to head back to NASA for the second attempt of the launch, which was last week's episode, in case you missed it. Oh, whoa. You gotta, you gotta go. <laughs> but we're loving getting to know St. Pete 
and got a special invitation from Randy to join him on the water. <laughs> okay, today is all about seeing St. Pete. Yes. Randy's gonna from give the water. us a little tour from the water of St. Pete in the Tampa Bay area, I believe. So we told him you're in charge. Yep. Thank you for inviting us out. Yeah. This is gonna be good. That was so cool. I, I think I'd be like giddy working here and be like, okay, let's get another one, guys. <laughs> Man, is this beautiful. What is the breakdown? What year? What's the model? This is a gorgeous boat. 2019. Okay. Um, I think we got a couple hundred hours on it now. Um, Tierra Sport, how many feet? 30, they call it a 34, 34 okay. nine, so. And two 350s, so two this thing scoots. Uh, there are, it's a pretty heavy boat. Oh, is so it? Okay. Yeah, it's a 52 mile hour boat, so not oh, real fast. Uh, but it's pretty fast. Plenty fast enough. Yeah. When you get into this boat, you're more like about the, the, the ride over there instead of the speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, since it's not a fishing boat. And you've taken this to the Bahamas. Not this one. It's going this year in May. But my other boats, we've taken them all. This one, we haven't made it to the Bahamas in May. We took it to South Carolina. Wow. <laughs> and you do that with a rally with with, uh, with like uh, a group just of friends? friends. Yeah. Okay. Just grab three or four friends and we'll trailer over somewhere. We usually trailer to the other coast and go either to the Bahamas, yeah, the Abacos, or... And you trailer this? Oh yeah. With with what? Towing what? Uh, my 354. Okay. okay. Yeah. Single wheel? Single wheel. Awesome. It, well, it, how much does the boat weigh? 13.5. Okay. That's that's a that's an RV. What's yeah. the pin weight? What's the hitch weight of a, on a trailer I, triple axle? I think I think I try to get around 1,800 pounds. I could be off on that. But okay. I remember, so 350 is perfect because you got 3,400 yeah. of payload, 1,800. Yeah. That's great. So. Randy's gonna learn that everything takes twice as long with oh, a camera nice. today. Okay, all right. So you see those three buttons right there? Right here. Uh, yep. Yeah, on. Push them one time each of them. You'll push the ignition button. Yeah. And now the other one. This one over here? Yeah. Oh, for both of them? Yeah, then the start button will start the right and left engine. Just, you just push hold that. it down or push it once? Just push it, hold it. It should start. Do the other one. So we're running. Go ahead and go sideways again. And just this does twist also. So now you turn off the joystick and just use this. So anytime you engage the engines, the joystick oh. automatically turns off. So if you stop the boat by putting it in reverse, pull it back, both like this, you just leave, leave here. All right, and back in oh, neutral. Oh, now the steering wheel, now back yeah. in neutral. Mm -hmm. So you notice the boat's turning this way now, yep. and it's going forward. So I'm gonna put it in reverse. And I'm gonna only drive with one stick now, is I'm going to reverse this mm. and stop my forward motion. Which but is, knowing that it's still going that direction. So it's gonna go that direction. So I'm just watching my forward motion right now. So you're looking it, at the, the, the so shore. So if I'm backing up, I just ease up on, because I got forward motion yeah. going. I just back up on the deal and just yeah. watch the boat. Bring it back, forward back just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, you passed your rotation I've, I, skills. I've unlocked my rotation badge. <laughs> We're ready to go to the next How many step? badges are there? Today? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Is that where we're having lunch? Yeah. yeah. going around here and we're going all the way out here in the Gulf and then we'll go in over here and make it back. That's the plan. 
Yeah. It got dark on us real quick. Right there. Okay. And we're coming in from the Gulf. We're coming into uh, the St. Petersburg, Tampa inlet. Yeah. And we're following previous popcorn trails here, but um, we're also looking, if you look way out there, you can see the, the green markers and the red markers. And then Caleb's on the lights up top, and he's getting them just set in right so that when the lights come by, those green markers out there, we can see, it, it reflects them so we know where we are. We have our scout, Randy. This is pretty cool that we came in here at night. Oh wow, what is that, a C-130? Yeah. Is that a Coast Guard plane? Yeah, that's awesome. All right. There you go. Well done, sir. Thank you. Well done. That was kind of fun. Randy's Docking great. it twice. Randy's a great teacher. Speaking of Randy, he runs the Red Bull Day in the Dirt down south in Dade City and hired Caleb to help get ready for the event. Okay, I've been promoted. I started cleaning the bleachers and now I am cutting wood to make trophies with the table saw. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. But we've learned there's always something going on in St. Pete. Are you guys happy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Of course we are, yeah. <laughs> it's a heck of a last lap. Yeah. running hard too, and it's time to give our rig some much needed love and attention. Join us next week for repairs, mods, and some fun upgrades with Airstream nuts and bolts. All right, that's ought to be video worthy, huh? <laughs> on, yeah, see I'm down in the trenches with Ronnie down here. Yeah, I see that. All that grunting really helps. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there. <laughs>